Hey everybody, this is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett, welcome. Today I'd like to explore a little deeper the uh, ideas of yin and yang and particularly emphasizing the yin and uh, kind of getting into the meanings and maybe dispelling some of the ideas that uh, kind of crept in around that in pop culture and um, try to break it down to its really its, its simplest form. So the, uh, the concept of yin and yang historically was, I guess, you know, the, the story I heard was it was originally used to describe the, the dark side of the mountain was the yin and the, the bright side was yang. And this was helpful because that changed during the day as the sun moved around and, and the dark became light and the light became dark. And so it depended on where you were standing that, you know, was whether it was yin or yang and what time of day it was and all the, the other factors involved. But it was a way of describing this dynamic relationship that occurs in, in nature. And, um, and so then expands from there to describe all manner of phenomena in the, in the Chinese model. And um, so one of the ideas that, you know, has kind of crept in and I, I hear it every now and then, you know, from different, uh, different people. It's like, well, you know, there is really no yin and yang. There's just yin yang. It's just one thing. And, uh, and so that we can't really say that there's a yin or a yang. And, uh, and that's, true up to a point, uh, but it not very helpful. And that's because that it describes one, one perspective, which is that of where everything is fused. It says, oh, you know, everything's fused. And so there is no motion. And it maybe describes a condition where you're inside at something. And there is no yin and yang because it's all just one thing but when you step outside of something and you want to talk about it then suddenly oh we have this binary situation that occurs there's you know we need to compare something to another thing we need to say oh well yeah it's all one mountain but there's this light side and then there's this dark side and can we talk about the dark side and the white light side. And so whenever, once we start entering language into it, once we start thinking about it, then it's useful to be able to make this distinction. And one can say that, that well, yin and yang do not exist as things in and of themselves. And that would be entirely accurate. Yet they exist as a statement of relationship and so one can establish relationship and, and, and say, this is going toward the yin, this is going toward the yang. And the simplest way that I have come up with, with to describe it is that which is expanding, moving up and out, is, tends to be considered more yang. That which is down and in tends to be more, more yin. So expansion, is yang contraction is yin and that describes this this pulse and there's lots of other ways to talk about it but that's helpful to me for talking about energy because yes there is this in 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 a sense there is just is one energy because until we think about it it's just what's going on but once we start thinking about it and establishing a relationship to it, then we change that dynamic. Same thing with moving in stillness. There is no absolute stillness, at least in the physical universe, but we can create stillness based on our thoughts, based on our relationship to, to that. So if I'm here occupying this space in this chair at this time, relative to this chair, I am going at zero miles per hour. And me and the chair are really tight right now. So there is no movement there. And I could call that stillness. 
Yet if I uh, say, okay, relative say to the rotation of the earth, I'm moving pretty fast. At New York City, you have, uh, we're rotating around the, the axis at about 766 miles per hour, which is moving pretty, pretty good. At the, at the equator, it's up to 1,000. So you get, it changes depending on where you're at. So the how much speed is there is relative to what? If we talk about, say, the, the, um, the way the Earth is moving through the solar system, revolving around the sun, I think we're up to like around 66,000 miles per hour. So that's moving really fast. So the stillness is based entirely on my relationship to what it is I'm talking about. The same thing with yin and yang. And we can go toward more and more yin or more and more yang in our energy and cultivate that. And by doing that, we expand our range. Because whenever we, uh, um, whenever there's motion in anything, then we got energy. So it, um, and humans are what's called a far from equilibrium system. That is, we exchange a lot with our environment. A healthy human has an optimal range of, an optimal range of, of equilibrium, of d dynamic equilibrium. That is, they exchange, you know, we exchange breath with food. We, uh, we do all kinds of things, we move around. So our relationship to our environment has energy going in and out. And that's pretty cool. As we move closer to a absolute equilibrium, we move closer to death. So as we move into that stillness that total stillness then we are moving closer and closer to ceasing to exist as as a living creature so we want to find that optimum relationship and so the motion could be considered the the yang and the stillness the yin and so we have we're trying to find what's the optimal relationship in any given moment between the yin and the yang so as we're considering these things, we, we, could, we create yin and yang. It does not exist in and of itself. It is manufactured by our minds, just the way, say, hot and cold are. There is no such thing as hot and cold in and of itself. But if I touch a hot stove, I want a word for that. Say, hey, that's really hot. And... It exists as a thing to me in that moment relative to what I'm willing to tolerate in that moment. And same thing if I'm outside in the winter and don't have my jacket on and I'm feeling kind of chilly, then I'm experiencing cold relative to my tolerances. Somebody else says, you call that cold? <laughs> That's not cold. It, uh, so it, it varies based on my perception, my experience, my comfort zone. Same thing with yin and yang. If we can stretch our understanding and stretch our tolerance of the extremes of yin and yang, not drastically, but gradually, so that we're building up our willingness to tolerate these poles in opposition, willingness to tolerate the energy, then we have more available to us for our Kung Fu, as well as everything else. We have more, there's more um, of a dynamic quality, there's more vitality. So that, that word vitality, it, it indicates able to do stuff, more alive. And that aliveness comes from a, a healthy relationship between yin and yang energies in your body. So the, uh, 
I'm going to emphasize the yin side, the yin energies, as we've done many times in recent weeks, um, mainly because what most people think of as energy, and most people have, if they have some experience of chi, it tends to be in yang chi, that is the bubbly, sparkly, effervescent stuff, the stuff that you know creates heat and uh, movement. And there is, uh, if we, you know, a common uh, understanding of, of of being energetic means able to move around really fast and and very quickly and uh, and and animatedly. And so that is the energy that most of us think of in terms of, you know, our own personal energy. But what I would like to draw attention to is the opposite, the yin side. And that is as profound as the yang side. It just, it, at first look, it appears like more of a nothing than a something. And so it tends to get ignored. It tends to be, you know, uh, look, look past because it doesn't stick out like the, like the Yang Chi does. And for years now, I have been emphasizing the Yang energy because that most people have a collapsed energy. Most people that I've run into have a collapsed energy field based on their structure, based on their their attitudes and whatnot. And so getting pumping up the balloon by creating more yang has been a really important part of the uh, of the way I have taught this stuff because I want really people to really get that get that feeling there of of being alive and full of vitality and and have that yang chi, that yang experience, because that's what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking, you say, hey man, life is, you know, beating me down. I need more, more of that stuff. And so I tend to, to push that. It also creates a structure that allows us to, to feel safe. So whenever I talk about central equilibrium, I've emphasized going into the balls of the feet as a way of cranking up the yang chi. And um, lately, I've been balancing that with more into the heels as a way of, of creating more yin chi. And so notice here, I'm talking about creating it. So it's not something that is happening to you. This is something that you are making. And it's not, uh, you're not doing it completely uh, out of your imagination, you know, we can visualize being in a sea of energy that is permeating everything and has there's more energy available to us than than we can possibly even imagine and for us to be able to tap into a even a little bit of that by connecting up with the big chi enables us to feel that vitality but balancing out that is this yin and what it does is it allows you to have more space available for more of the young. So they, they work hand in hand. And um, the short story, I, um, uh, last winter, I was having some, some difficulty with uh, kind of like waking up with vertigo in the morning. It's like, you know, what's going on here? And I, I had it checked out and they, there was nothing physically wrong. So I realized that it was something I was doing with my energy. And it took a, it took a while, took a few months, but I, I kind of came to the understanding that what I had done was I'd been working too much on the young side and it was creating this imbalance. I was getting, you know, the energy was coming up and I was, I was getting, I was losing that ability to ground my energy. And uh, so then I, started to work on more on cultivating this yin aspect, this yin connection to balance that out. And it worked like, like a charm to be able to, to balance thing that, uh, that out and the symptoms disappeared and life was good, but it was a, just a little, 
a little uh, wake up call for me. It was a canary in the coal mine there that, oh, you know, this is too far in one direction, Rick. You know, head back to it, come back to the other side, cultivate that yin side so that I can then, oh, go up even higher uh, uh, the next time. So um, we're going to do some stuff with that and uh, uh, see if we can take a, a little deeper into the end of the yin. Before we uh, stand up and get into that, anybody have any questions, comments, complaints, thoughts? Nope. Uh, Richard. Um, I, I just want to ask a question. Um, it see, <clears throat> Let's see. For me, a change in understanding Yang um, came with understanding that we were reaching, not pushing. Um, because when we talk about reaching and expressing power through reaching, that's a yang expression. Is, am I right about that so far? I think so. And I started thinking about that, which is... Um, which is much less um, much less clear, I think, than thinking of Yang and the power of Yang as expressing a push. So I, I started realizing the difference between what I thought of as muscular energy, muscular expression, and energetic expression. I, I and think once I, I once I thought. Once I thought about the difference, it also made yin much clearer to me. Okay, I, I, th I think for, for clarity's sake, I would say what you're talking about would be better described as the difference between jin and li. Okay. Because both both the push and the reach are, are yang expressions. Okay. So, so I think it's it's it, it's it's a little probably a little clearer if you think of it in terms of muscular force versus that uh, a healthy uh, mix of energy and 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 body. But it, I I was thinking that it, it helped me understand energetic force as opposed to muscular force, and that's exactly what we're talking about here. And what and it, once I understand versus and, lead. And once I started understanding that, it, I think it helped me understand the the force of the expression of a yin energy as well. Good. I wasn't thinking about yin. I never was thinking about yin as a muscular kind of thing, but I was thinking of yang as that. Uh -huh. And once I started thinking of yang as, stopped thinking of yang as that, it made it, it balanced it much better. Okay. I don't sound sounds like that only makes sense to me. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> if it helps you to uh, to go deeper, then go for it. <laughs> uh, you know the way I describe would describe what you're what, the phenomenon you're describing there. I would say Jin versus Li. And okay. So, so and and uh, both both anything going up and out is a Yang. And I want to make a distinction here between. Yang Chi, that is that expanding energy and Yang movements, because they're 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 they you know two different sides of the same coin. One is you know the substantial side would be the Yang movements, the insubstantial would be the Yang Chi, so that which animates the movements. So then we get you know and so making uh, that distinction I think is really important because you can have Yin Chi and a Yang movement and stuff like that. So it's a uh, uh, it you know gets it gets complicated. You as in anything when we're talking about Yin and Yang is you have to identify the things that you are comparing. It's always you know this and that you know and trying to keep them you know in the same category. You know like hot and cold are are both relative to heat, whereas up and cold are not <laughs> you know up and down are nice you know they they're poles 
in that system, but you know, you want to get it so that they're poles in the same system. Okay, th thank you. You bet. I, I think that's all that's all a little helpful. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Valerie. Um <clears throat> I have to say that I've realized uh very mistakenly uh, I bought into it at least to a, a certain degree that you know yang is strong and yin is weak. Many and of us I, have that have that idea. Yes, so. yes. Uh, <laughs> it is not unusual. And or yang is hard and and yin is mushy. Yeah, and it's like no, we always want to be young. We you know the yin is for another time. It's it's not something that you want to pursue um, necessarily. Um, yeah, you got to have both. I, I've known that and. Uh, just some misconceptions. And recently at Taiji Alchemy, having really explored at a very deep level the yin, um, it's so profoundly powerful in a very different way. It's got its own, not to be saying strong is such a great thing, but it's got its own magnificent magnificent strength it's very powerful and it just uh i'm glad that i have now experienced the um that to the degree that i have you know to to know that yes there's there's differences but just because it's yin doesn't make it any it's not a wimp <laughs> you know it's like you can look at the earth and say oh yeah the earth is a wimp no that's not true if you punch somebody and you have the power of the earth behind you that's yin coming forth right and you knock somebody across the room it's expressed through our physical body and now i'm kind of losing my point but i'm just very happy that i have the I have had the chance to experience yin to such a great degree. It's made a difference. Great. Beautiful. I'm back. I'm back at work and I'm going full bore. <laughs> and the yin is keeping me from just losing it. From what? Killing somebody. Yeah, not I'm not killing anybody. That's really good. <laughs> Yay. Okay. The, have you notified the police? <laughs> no, because I didn't kill anybody. So no, I guys, tell him. not killing anybody today. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm a fan of in very yeah. much so. Yeah, so we uh, uh, to your point, it's a very good point, you know. And to that point is is that there is a sense in a lot of people's minds, particularly Taiji people, that Yin collapses. It folds like a like a like a tent you know and uh no it the the yin energy can be expressed in the through the same yin and yang can be expressed through the same form so in other words if you if you hold your arm out in a ward off position you can have the energy going up and out or you can have it coming down and in depending on which on on your whim you know, which way you are going to direct it. First, you have to get familiar enough with the feeling of, of the yin to be able to say, oh, okay, that's what that feels like. And then to be able to, to then shift it at will is a, you know, it's, that's part of, part of the, the kung fu. That's part of the, the practice is we getting so familiar with it that we can, can turn it. So it's like, uh, if you think about like a, if your arm is a pipe, you know, and the, the pipe, can, the water can go, you know, this way, the water can go that way. Either way, it's still the same pipe and it still has the same strength that the, the same structure that the, that the pipe has. It's just which way are you taking the energy? And that allows you to, to do cool stuff with it. Great. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, let's do some stuff. Why don't you stand up, please? I 
adjust the brightness a little bit. I think it's a little, a little bright. Okay, let's get a few of your central equilibrium. And we're going to start with the yang. Feel your weight over the balls of your feet. The knees are unlocked. And you're sinking into the balls of your feet. And uh, it's establishing a really profound connection, a yang connection through your feet. And reach with the crown of your head. And that creates a, a connection to the yang chi of the heavens. So we've got the, you know, we're feeling the earth chi, which is yin, and but it's our connection there is yang. So it's allowing the energy to to be very expansive and reach with your elbows, your fingers, point your index fingers and feel that energetic coherence and feel your fingernails. And it'll help to enhance that young expression as well. Tuck in your chin and open the jade pillow gate. Relax your shoulders, reach with your elbows, and wag your tail. Just reach with the tail as you turn. And release down into your quad. Feel that softening. And feel into your structure. And feel the expansiveness of the of the chi as it moves through your body and fills your hands. Now shift and keeping your central equilibrium, you want to shift into your heels and release down into your heels. And feel the yin. Feel the energy moving down, down, down into the earth. Notice the substantial difference in your internal state as you do this. And go into the balls of your feet and feel that expansiveness. Open your joints, reach with your crown of your head. Now sink into your heels and take it even deeper. Extend your awareness down through your heels into the earth and feel yourself reaching down. The whole body just feels like it's going down, it's being sucked down into the earth. But your structure is still the same. So your structure is not collapsing. What's being pulled down is the energy. Now go back into the balls of your feet and feel that expansion. Feel yourself filling up, opening, expanding, radiating outward. Now sink into your heels and draw the energy in. Attract the energy. Eat the chi. Take it in, move it through. Go to the balls of your feet and press down with your toes. 
Feel your fingernails. Connect those up with your toes and feel the energy that that creates. And then start to reach with your wrists. Very slowly reach up and out. Relax your shoulders. Feel the heaviness of your arms. Keep your weight in the balls of your feet. Feel your toes pressing down. As you're coming up, reaching, reaching up to about chest height. Feel, reach with the elbows. Reach with the fingers. Feel the fingernails as if they're like claws. You're reaching out, grabbing with your claws. And expand from your spine, feel your spine and expand, expand your shoulder blades, feel the space between your shoulder blades and open that up. Feel your back expanding, widening, open your shoulder joints, reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, reach with the fingers. Feel that expansion. Feel the energy coming up through you and out, radiating outward, shooting up like a fountain. Now go to your heels, reach down to your elbows. Bend your hands so that your, bend your wrists so your fingers start to come up now as you're coming down. Sink, sink, deeper, deeper into the earth. Feel the fullness in your body. So even though we're working with the yin chi right now, it, there's a sense of fullness there. And this is something you can do sitting or standing. You just have going deeper and deeper into that yin. We're expanding our tolerance of that, that, negative space we're creating more space down below kind of think of it as like the roots of a tree the deeper the roots go the higher the branches can reach and extend I'm going to go into the balls of your feet Reach with your wrists, let your fingers hang. So your fingers are dropped now. If your arms reach up, feel the heaviness of your arms. Relax your shoulders, relax your muscles. Use the absolute least amount of force necessary to just bring your arms up to chest height and reach with the fingers. Open the back, feel the space between your scapula. Feel your shoulders opening, your elbows. You're reaching with your fingers now, opening. Feel that yang expansion. Feel yourself getting bigger and bigger. You're, there's like a bubble around you and that just keeps expanding, blowing up like a balloon. And don't place a limit on it. Just keep, let it go. Let it keep expanding outward, radiating outward. And then sink into your heels. Find your center equilibrium. Down with the elbows. Bend the wrists and lift the fingers now as your hands come down. Sink. Sink. Deep.
You just feel into that yin. Allow it to go deeper and deeper. And know that you can shift between the yin and the yang very quickly. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go and we're going to do a, uh, a Tai Chi form. We're going to do the uh, Yang Cheng Fu's 13 original postures. We'll just do the first part of it. Nice and slow. I'll talk you through it. I'm going to turn my back to you so you can follow along. I'll try to describe it as best I can. The important thing here is not in memorizing the choreography. It's about feeling into your body as you go through this, feeling into your energy and controlling and regulating your yin and yang. So I will talk to you as we do it and, and you can make the necessary shifts depending whether it's yin and yang. So I'm going to turn around now. So begin with your heels together and toes apart. And start off feeling into the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of your head, reach with your elbows. Feel those fingernails. Wag your tail, feel the Feel that each time you turn, you want to reach with the tail as well as all the other stuff we're doing. And don't worry if you forget the pieces. I'm going to talk to you and uh, you don't have to remember anything. So begin, wag your tail a little bit to the right and turn a little bit to the left and then turn to the right, wag your tail to the left. And pick up your left heel and step out. Now feel your left foot. Feel the heel of your left foot. Feel the yin as you sink into your left foot. Your left claw. Wag your tail to the left. Now feel the ball of your left foot and turn. Now feel the both heels as you're settling down into that. Feel the yin. Now go into the balls of your feet. Reach with the wrists. Let your fingers hang, just like we were doing before. Reach. Reach with the fingers, open, open the joints, open be your back between your shoulder blades, reach out. Now sink into your heels, feel the yin, reach down with your elbows. Bend the wrists and lift the fingers as your hands come down. Feel the yin, sink. Now go to the balls of your feet, reach down with the fingers and feel the yang. Feel yourself filling with the yang chi. Now sink into your heels and feel the yin. Feel the left heel spiral down to the right, wag your tail to the left. And then wag your tail to the right. And now feel the ball of your left foot and reach with the right hand. You're feeling the yang expansion now. Now feel your right heel. Sink into your right heel. Wag your tail to the right, spiral to the left. Now wag your tail to the left. Into the heel, you're sinking yin, 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 as your arms come across your body. And now go into the yang, the, the ball of your foot, and reach with both hands. 
Feel that expansion, opening. Now feel your left heel. Sink into your left heel, go yin in the left, spiral down to the right, wag your tail to the left, and then wag your tail to the right and turn into the heel. And now go into the ball of your left foot and feel the yang. Feel the right heel. Think into that, feel the yin. Wag your tail to the right. And then wag your tail to the left as you turn. Feel the ball of your right foot and feel the yang. Reach, open. Feel that expansion. All the joints are opening. Your back is opening. Everything is opening, yang. Now feel your right heel, wag your tail a little bit to the left, sink into your right claw, and pick up your left foot, step out. Feel the left heel, sink into the left, feel the yin there as you spiral down to the right, wag your tail to the left and then turn. Yin, 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 now, Ball of the foot and yang. Yang, open, reach, step in a little bit. Feel that expansion. Feel your joints opening. Feel the tensegrity of the whole body mind as you're reaching outward. Big, big form. Now feel your right heel. Sink into that, spiral down to the left, wag your tail to the right, and turn. Go into the ball of your foot, your hand, and as your right hand crosses your face, you turn into a bird's beak. And sink into your right heel, yin. And then feel the ball of your right foot and Turn, wag your tail to the right as you reach out with your wrist. Open, open the chest. Open the shoulders, reach with your wrist. Feel that yang expansion. Sink into the heel of the right foot. Wag your tail to the left. Pick up your left foot and step out. Feel the heel of your left foot. Push your left knee out, sink. Yin and the left foot. Reach up with your left elbow, your left wrist. Open and feel the yang of the left, the ball of the left foot, and feel the yang and turn and put a single whip. Feel the yang expansion in this posture. Hands come down, pivot, turn, step in. And just feel into the heels, feel the, the yin right now. Go to the balls of your feet, take a deep breath, open, reach, feel the yang, feel the expansion, gathering. Now sink into your heels and feel the yin. Press down with your hands and disappear the chi.
Allow yourself to dissolve into the emptiness. Let go of your thoughts, your body, your energy. Just feel into a state of pure being. Okay, please have a seat. Hmm. Hmm. Sharon. Well, that really ramps things up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh talk, talk talk about that a little bit. I'd like to hear I, okay, I I was on fire. On fire. Okay. I could not have tolerated that. And then I went to yin. And it diminished. It changed. Um, I was then able to tolerate what was there before. I don't know how to say it. It wasn't all gone, but it was much better. How's that? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> but it was palpable. <laughs> well, you know, I, this definitely should be a winter exercise outside. <laughs> Turn the thermostat down and heat the place up. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Beautiful. Thank you. Valerie. Um. I had the same feeling, Sharon. The difference to me with the heat was with the young, it's, yeah, it's very, uh, it's big and, but there's still, the, to me, the same amount of heat in the yin, but it's softer. It's, um, you know, and, uh, and I don't I don't mean to use the word aggressive, but I can't think of a better one right now. The the yang, the heat is just it's out there and yeah, it's like it's a lot. And the yin, it's just as powerful, but it's soft. Mm. And they're therefore tolerable. You know, it just <laughs> it feels more gentle, but it's still just as for me, it feels just as strong. Great. Terrific. Beautiful. Good. Scott. So since TCA and this really accentuated it, um, I don't, I'm feeling less and less difference between the yin and the yang. I mean, just more, more that they're just different flavors of energy, but one's, you know, they're, both just as palpable. There's no. That's that's my ex, that's the experience I've been getting that's, with. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's the uh, uh, yes, good. That uh, and that was rather rather quickly that you made that uh, uh -huh. made that that jump. That's the uh, that's really uh, that's very cool. Cool. Oh. Anybody else? Any other comments? Okay, um, <laughs> good. Um, yeah, so try it out, and you know, in your in your form is great, but but also just throughout the day, just shift, and and just get it so that you're fine tuning your control over your internal state, and as you you know become accustomed to the intensity of the energy, but also the quality of it. It, uh, you know, you, you learn to regulate it and requires less and less physical expression to make those changes. You get it so that you're able to control your energy directly 
just because you've gotten so familiar with it that you get so that it's you're able to crank it up, let it go, redirect it uh, at will. And that's kind of the direction we're heading in with these exercises is learning to have uh, a finer and finer control, uh, bigger amplification and more familiarity with the uh, with the process. So it uh, uh, this is an important step toward doing that, getting it so that you're so you're comfortable, you know, making that shift between yin and yang. Cool. Okay. Thank you all. Oh, Scott, you had some. Um, yeah, you just made me think of a question. So I've been doing this um, since TCA, and um, what I experience it seems to be um, less defined, becoming less defined. But when I go yang, it's more forward and front. And when I go yin, it's more back. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I mean, I know, you know, we're going yang into the, you know, balls and yin into the heels, but I feel it not just in my feet, I feel it in my whole body. Good, good. I think, I think that's, uh, that's uh, to be expected, you know, because that's our, our orientation is we do stuff with our anterior and less with our posterior. And so it becomes that it's that orientation, that yin yang orientation seems to be appropriate for the, uh, you know, for, for what you're describing there. I think that as we become really comfortable with it, then we're, we're not limited by our familiarity with that orientation. But I think that that might take a couple more days to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's something that we can, we can, we can work on. We start to, and, and then you start to sense, you start to use your chi, since you're expanding your field, you start to use your ting jin to feel things with your field. And then that gets opens up a whole new set of uh, phenomena and abilities and perceptions as we go forward. So uh, uh, I think that there's lots, lots more to discover. And this is an important step to uh, help us along the way to make sense of, of the, the process as we go forward. Great. Valerie? Um, something I think I'm going to play with this week is because I had the same sensation as Scott did. And I was aware that, you know, uh, that's not all, that's not what it is exactly. It's not back as yin and forward as yang. So I'm going to be playing with being more in my heels, being yin as I lift my arms. And as they come down, I'm going to go into yang. Just just to build that, uh, strengthen that feeling. That, that's, you know, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So that will, you know, that makes it less body dependent. You know, so you're making a bigger distinction between the physical and the energetic. Right. And, uh, that's terrific. I think, uh, I think it's something we can all play with and, uh, and doing so will enable us to uh, become more, uh, able to control, you know, something which is pretty uh, insubstantial. So, cool. Yeah, Scott. Um, yeah, I, I sort of had the same thought um, that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna work on like you know feeling the yin behind me and the yang, feeling the yang behind me and the yin in front of me. Try and see if I can sort of balance them out. Good. If that makes any sense. Good, good. I think it's good to have, at least for now, a frame of reference to have like heels yin, balls yang, just till that becomes so automatic that you can then do other stuff with it too. Yeah. <laughs> so all this is cool. Yes. Great. Do you have something, Sharon? I noticed that as soon as I thought 
about going to either my ball or of my foot or the heel, a change instantaneously started to happen just with the thought. Bravo. Whoa. Bravo. And yeah, that's so we're and on sometimes a... I, I had it going and I said, wait, wait, you got to get back there now, you know, or forward. But it was it happened just with the thought. Nice, nice. So that's what I'm talking about. It's like we as we you know we anchor it with our, our, our physicality, but then it opens to all kinds of possibilities. And having those anchors there are helpful as reminders, just like pointing your index finger is a really important reminder to get energetically coherent, you know, but you can, once you get really, really familiar with energetic coherence, you just go there. But all these things are uh, milestones in our Kung Fu. They are, they're they're saying, oh, I'm not I'm not here anymore. I'm here, you know. And you're able to uh, you're able to recognize those things which seemed so foreign, impossible, are now like in your toolkit, and then it opens up the door for more, more, more. And we build platforms. We build, you know, to go to launch us into the next the next level. Great. This has been great. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Love you guys. You Bye -bye. too.